The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you Brother Ford. My wife and I are celebrating 40 years in the ministry this year. That's right. 2021 is our 40th year in ministry. And so what I'm going to do to kind of highlight that throughout the year is I'm going to take you back in our archives and I'm going to show you some of the messages that we preached over the last 39 years. I'm going to take you all the way back to 1989 and we're going to begin to look at some of the messages and so I want you to sit there and understand it's not HD because it's from then, but it's clear enough for you to hear and see. And I want you to sense and feel the anointing, the very power of God that's resting upon the sermons as we traveled across America, blazing a trail for the gospel, preaching hope, bringing deliverance. So as you tune in this week, I want you to know you're going to be viewing from our archives, amen, some of the vintage messages. And you know, just like wine, it gets better with age. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To every thing there is a season. Everything has a season. Don't try to do something out of season. You don't go duck hunting out of season. There's a season to duck hunt. Come on, you don't go rabbit hunting when you get ready. There's a season to do. Everything has a season. And a time Notice, things have seasons, but purposes have time. There's a time to every purpose. We got to understand there's a time to every purpose in the earth, or under the heaven, which puts it in the earth. So there's, a, there's a time for it. Then he says, there's a time to be born. How many know there's a difference between birth and conception? See, things are conceived and folks get excited, but there comes a time when there must be a birthing forth, a revealing, a manifesting of it. How many know when we conceive, when a woman conceives a child, she tells everybody that I've conceived. She tells her friends, girl, guess what? I mean, it's so exciting because I have conceived. Now, you know, like uh, when I was young, they didn't say like, you know, now she conceived and they just say, oh, catch her. She knocked up again. Uh, some folks will say she pregnant. When I was young, they would say she's expecting. Huh? So from the time, from the moment of conception, expectation is birth. Anticipation is birth. It's a noise abroad. And you notice at conception, when it, especially when an individual is married, everything is legal and proper and holy, and you, you make the announcement about conception, there's an excitement, there's a joy, there's an, a mutual interest and, and concern. And folks start want to know that day, what is it? Well, I don't know. Well, well, I'm about, I'm about you, you, ready, you ready to support it. You ready to get toward the conception. But how many know the real support is needed at the birth? Huh? The, the birth. And you know, it ain't too many folks announcing, I'm, I'm, I'm finna, no, it's, it's after. It's after the birth comes. So now watch this. It's a time to be born, a time for this thing to come forth, a time for the manifestation of it. Then the Bible says the time to die. The death part is the part we haven't caught a hold to. There's something, let me lie you at the brook. There was a time to sit at that brook. But how many know there came a time when the brook died? That death was ready for what? The next phase. It got to go on to something else. See? And some of us don't like leaving Zarephath. We don't want to take the journey to Zion. But you got to go on. So there's a time for some things to be put aside. Some things in your life need to die now so you can go on to the next phase in God. At Rim, you used to be in the, that level you used to give on, the level you used to talk on, think on, pray on, believe on. It's time for that to die so you can go to the next level. A time to plant. There's a time to sow. There's a time to give and yield. And many of us, we, we, we don't realize there's also a time to pluck up. But notice you ain't just plucking up. You're plucking up that which is planted. So if you miss planting time, guess what? Thank you. 
There, there will be no plug time. Come on. But for those that have planted it, because you have planted it, then you can boldly stand and declare harvest time will come. He said a time to pluck up that which was planted. There's a time for these things to happen. Philippians chapter 3, there's a time. I want you to keep in your mind, there's a time. Amen. Every purpose under, this, under the heaven has a time to it. There's a time for purpose. I mean, no, ain't no, we say ain't no time for foolishness, but there's time for purpose. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians, the third chapter, verse 12, the Bible says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. I am pursuing. You got to begin to pursue something. If that I may apprehend, if I can catch, if I can understand, if I can take eagle, if I can seize, if I can possess, if I can apprehend, if I literally, when he said right there, he said, if I can apprehend, he literally meant comprehend. If I can understand, huh? if I can apprehend that for which also I am apprehended. Now, that's what he meant. See, possessing. See, Jesus has seized us for a purpose. And I don't believe some folks realize why they was even called. I don't believe some folks realize why they're chosen. You got to comprehend why you were apprehended. And see, if you don't understand why God got a hold to you, how many know your ways would never become reprehensive to you? You just keep doing your own thing your own way and be talking about, I'm called, I'm chosen, the Lord got his hand on me. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting, forgetting, purposely loosing from the mind those things which are behind and reaching forth under those things which are before. I press, I press, I preach the message. Don't, don't cave in, but press in. Come on, Paul said, I press toward the mark with the prize of the high calling of God. I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm pressing toward the mark. There's a purpose here. There's a goal. There's an objective. I'm not just pressing. I'm pressing towards something for a purpose. Listen, I'm pressing somewhere for a reason. How many know when you run a race when you run a race if you run a if you run a, a hundred yard dash then you're just pressing toward that ribbon for a prize come on there's a purpose there but if you're in the relay race everybody is running amen the first man is going to get the baton to the second man to get the baton to the next man to get the baton to the anchor man and the anchor man is going to that ribbon he's not only taking the baton but listen he's going to that ribbon he wants the prize he wants the trophy he wants the contracts he wants the commercials and he wants his team's effort to be supported well because they ran hard to get him there see everything tells the purpose mm -hmm. which is in Christ Jesus now Proverbs Proverbs 28 Proverbs Proverbs that I press toward the mark for a purpose we, is there any purpose in your life is there is there any goal in your life is, there, is, is your life meaningful purposeful or is it purposeless Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 the Bible says where there is no vision the people perish but he that keep of the law happy is he where there is no vision the people perish but he that keep of the law happy is he look at your neighbor and tell him neighbor it's time to catch the vision that's what I want to talk about it's time to catch the vision the word time here means an appointed fixed or customary moment or hour for something to happen or began. It's a appointed, fixed, customary moment or hour for something to happen or for something to begin. So this is time to catch the vision. Now I want to deal with the word catch. So because I'm going to be really dealing with catch, let's now pick up vision. The word vision here, vision as it's used here is a dream, a revelation, or an oracle, a prophetic word or a redemptive revelation or simply put a divine purpose where there's no divine purpose where there is no oracle from God where there is no prophetic word where there is no redemptive revelation where there is no dream no goal no objective the people perish the word perish literally means to take away to remove all boundaries to remove all restraints to have no discipline whatsoever where there's no dream where there's no revelation no oracle from God God must 
must be speaking. If it's personal, God must be speaking into your life corporately here. It must be a word from this platform from God to this body. It's got to be a word. Listen, when the prophet of God goes on his face, goes into the presence of God, amen, and gets the word of God and begins to, he goes in as a priest for the people, gets the word of God, come back as a prophet on behalf of God and speaks the word, then literally it's God speaking, God uttering, God breathing, God pronouncing, God proclaiming. So therefore it's established, it's divine purpose, it's prophetic word, it's redemptive revelation coming to you. And what well, we don't have that. Now don't misunderstand me. A prophet of God will stand and bring something to the body of Christ and then the teachers in the body will catch that prophetic word and begin to break it down, begin to explain it, begin to deal with it and begin to discern it and to disciple it and get it to the body of Christ. That's good. That's fine. But baby, I'm talking about for this house, there's got to be a prophetic word from God to this body. We can't just go out and hear what other folks is teaching and bring it here and start explaining it. But I'm talking about we don't need a bunch of echoes all the time. Come on. We need the prophetic that, that God is saying, a real rhema from God. Do you not know the Bible today? Amen. To us is logos, but it's yesterday's rhema. Come on. Every word you read in Jeremiah today to you is logos, but to Jeremiah it was rhema. Come on. It was coming from God. So whatever we don't have that, people are undisciplined. People are unbridled. People have removed the borders. So it's time to catch the vision. The word catch means to capture or to seize. It's time to seize the divine purpose. It's time to seize the redemptive revelation. Every word from God brings you from something, purchases you from something, bringing you back to God. So God is trying to bring. Notice when John the Baptist came on the scene, what did he preach? He preached, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Jesus came behind him and preached, repent for the kingdom. Peter came behind him, preached, repent for the kingdom. Paul said, repent for the kingdom. Why? Re is a prefix. Amen. He said, to do it again. You know, when you retire, come on. You, when, you, when you refire, you fire it up again. Come on. So when he said, repent, He's telling you to repent again, repent the top. I'm at the penthouse. So come back to the top. Come back to God's way of thinking. What well, that's that's a redemptive revelation. That's a revelation that's redeeming me from and redeeming me unto. So when there's no redemptive revelation, people cast off their restraint. There's nothing. There's no purpose. There's no objective. There's no goal. So we just do whatever we want to do. Gay, sirrah, so sirrah, so whatever we'll be, we'll be. You just live foot loose and fancy free. Why? Because I have no purpose. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. So it doesn't matter what I do catch means to seize and especially after pursuit see you seize it after pursuing you 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 have to pursue it in order to catch it so when you when you are pursuing something and you catch it it, it means more to you why because i was trying to attain this anyway paul said i'm pressing toward i'm, I'm trying to attain this it goes on to mean to be a in Infected with. Now that's my definition. To be infected with. How many know it's time to get infected with the purpose of God? It's time to get infected with the vision of God. It's time to get infected with the redemptive revelation. How many know infection? You when we think about being infectionless, we think about diseases. Come on. We think about infectionless diseases. And I want you to know when a person gets infected with a disease, you know, the childhood diseases we can with the measles, the chicken pox. How many know when your baby got infected with the measles, she couldn't go to school the next day? Why? She was contagious. We need some contagious folks in this house, amen, to get infected with the vision and go and contaminate somebody else. I wish somebody in here would get infected with God's purpose for this ministry and go and contaminate Arkansas with it. Go and contaminate America with it. Come on. If you get infected with this vision and walk out of here, hallelujah, and then infect somebody, matter of fact, if you get so contagious, you can affect the folks in here. That's why they try to isolate you when you contaminate it. Because if they don't isolate you, they know you're going to contaminate. So, my God, we ain't trying to isolate you. We're trying to get you among as many as we can. We want you to learn to get infected with it. Once you get infected with this thing and become infectionless and become contagious, you can spread vision. You don't have to spread gossip. Catch the vision. The word catch goes on, it goes on, it goes on to to become caught or entangled in. Have you ever got caught up in something? You know, like these boys be on this internet and get caught up. I don't know, they, they just, huh? 
But get caught up in the vision. Get caught up in what God is saying. Get caught up in what God is doing to the point to where that's all you think about. That's what's on your mind. You, the brother, for, uh, spoke up on the internet, my God, four o'clock in the morning. They can't go to bed. They down there visiting windows and in houses. And in, in, but my God, get caught up in the vision so where it's all you think about. When you're going to and fro, the vision is when you go shopping, you don't spend so much because vision, I'm like, I got to keep this for vision. I got to put this in vision. I got to, got to put, you know, whatever you infect, whatever you caught up in, my God, that's where your money goes. That's what you just dump money into what? Because I'm into this. We get into vision. Mm -hmm. It means to take hold of. Have you taken a hold of the vision? I mean, no. If I'm going to take hold of something, then I got to do it on purpose. I got to reach. It's an act of my will. I'm taking hold to it. Uh, see, sometimes we don't, we don't try to take. We don't try to catch stuff. Then it goes on to say, and I, I like this next one. It means to obtain through effort. To obtain through effort. Oh, catch obtain, I got to make an effort to grasp the vision. The vision is being presented. The vision is being shared. The vision is being preached. But I'm not making an effort to catch it. See, we, we got to learn. Stand up, Brother Ingram. We, we got to learn how to catch the vision. Okay, put your Bible down. This, this is the vision, okay? Now, see, he had to, he had to exist. He caught the vision. The, the vision, was, 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 it was easy to catch, too, wasn't it? It was real easy, all right? Now, how, toss me the vision. Toss me the vision. He can't throw too good. What happened? Huh? I ain't, oh, it's my fault. Okay, come on. Toss it again. Look at that. That's how we want it. It just fell on me. We want to get it effortless. That's a good vision there, man. He put the vision on me, and I wasn't even trying to get it. But there's some folks, that's the only way they going to get it. If you don't put it on them without their effort, they ain't going to never get it. But my God, but how many know, if it's very, to toss it again, toss it again. It's very few times that's going to happen. Come on here. If I just make a little effort, could I catch the vision? If I would just make just a little bit of an effort, it's not that the vision ain't too deep. The vision ain't too heavy. What's the problem? Come on, give me the vision. Give me the vision. Pastor, I'm, give me the vision. What's the problem with us? How many know we got folks in the house that ain't making no effort to get a hold of nothing and go and say, ain't no vision. I ain't seen it. If they got vision, I don't know about it. Huh? You got to realize, amen, the catch literally means you got to make some effort. You seen folks play baseball. That ball go back there, I mean, they run, jump up on the wall. They, they making some effort to catch the thing. That's what I'm telling you. The vision being put out there so many different ways. But you sitting back there saying, if it fall on me like ripe cherries off a tree, I get it. If the law want me to have it, honey, he'll give it to me. If he don't, I'm just, at least I'm here. Catch, catch. Catch literally means to become affected by. Too many of us are not affected affected by what's happening in the house. Too many folks are not affected by what's going on in the house. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know everybody can't take a vacation anytime, but I mean, uh, like this, 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 this seminar that just happened in Dallas. There was some folks who wasn't affected by us, so they said, well, you know, I ain't going. I don't know. It's, you know, it's, just, it's just another one of them things they're doing. But you know what's wrong with folks like that? Then the folks that's going to be in the office for counseling. Come on. Then, why? They don't let nothing penetrate them. They don't let nothing affect their lives. This is what I'm trying to show you. You could have revived. Like this week revival. This week revival. It's going to be some folks who are not working nights who won't be here for no reason at all, but they're at home watching television. They're at home doing nothing. Why? Because they're not affected by the vision of the house. When you catch the vision of the house, then you know that there's purpose. There's divine purpose. So this revival this week is for a purpose and it's connected to the vision of this house. It's for the purpose of this vision that God orders. But you know some folks here are not in affected by it. So they say, well, I may, you know, Wednesday is my regular night to go, so I'm going to go Wednesday. Monday and Tuesday, I don't go nowhere for nobody. Listen, it means to respond to, to the point of being imbued with imbued with you respond to the vision you respond to the vision you respond to the vision what's the vision the vision is the word the vision is the oracle did we not just read right here where, where there is no vision the people perish but he that keep up the law wait, wait you talking about vision and law yeah he, he that keep up the word the vision is the prophetic word the redemptive revelation so he that keeps that revelation he that keeps that word he that responds to that word happy is he so when I begin to catch it I begin to read the pastor preach it I don't just sit there and say, yeah, what you think about it? But no, I respond to it because I caught it. See, so I respond to it to the point of imbued, which means imbuement is, Im, is penetration. It causes me to be penetrated. That thing penetrated me. Sometimes, have you ever noticed how the man of God can be preaching something and all of a sudden you say, mm, I got it. You ain't got it, but you got it. Because you got it, how many know you're going to get it? 
Yeah, you caught the revelation. In other words, uh, uh, the definition here goes on to mean, praise the Lord, to grasp in the senses or in the mind, to take it, to get it. It goes on to literally mean to comprehend. So when you say, I got it, you're saying, I understand it. I comprehend it. Now, I have know if I understand it, I can attain it. Because I comprehended it, I will possess it. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That the, the, the apprehend is the possession. Comprehend is the understanding of the thing. When the man is preaching this thing, all of a sudden, while he's preaching, it goes over my head. So because I didn't get it, I don't have it. Because I didn't comprehend it, I can't apprehend it. But then one day, got it. Ah! Oh, my God, I got that thing. Folk around you be like, what's she hollering for? She got it. You missed it. Come on. When you get it inside of you, when you conceive that thing, then all of a sudden when you perceive it and conceive it, then you know I can apprehend this thing. Why? Because I've caught the vision. I've made an effort. I've caught the vision. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It is time. The time has come now to understand the vision so that you can obtain the vision. Huh? Too, too many times, too many times we come in and we don't comprehend. Too many times we don't perceive. Too many times we make no effort. Mm -hmm. Quiet in Zion. Let's go to Rebecca. It's quiet in Zion, but that's all right. That's all right. It's time to catch the vision. Come on. When you catch a hold to the vision, when you seize the vision, when you grasp the vision, when you get infected with the vision, when you become affected by the vision, when you begin to respond to the vision, vision, hallelujah, is, 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 is goal, is objective, is purpose, is discipline. If we could ever catch a hold to vision, if we could ever catch a hold to purpose, purpose, it'll change your attitude. Get it on. <laughs> Rebecca chapter 2. Verse 3. Well, let's start with verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch, observe, to see what he will say unto me. And what, he, what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me. Now, I'm watching to see what he's going to say unto me. I'm watching to see what he's going to say. You see what I'm talking about? The man is talking about saying and seeing. I want to see what he's going to say. No, it seems like he said, I want to hear what he's going to say. He said, I want to see what he's going to say. That's perception, baby. That's comprehension, baby. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Even though the man of God is saying, he wants you to see it. That's why you be talking to somebody. He said, do you see it? Can't see that thing. Had to keep pumping that word that you watch this. He said, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm waiting here to see what he's going to say. And he answered me and said, right. So that means he didn't show me something. He didn't tell me to draw or sketch the vision, did he? He said, write the vision. Why? Because he's speaking. He's communicating. And he wants me to perceive it and receive it and then write it down and make it plain. Don't, in other words, if God says something simple, don't go around trying to make it so deep, trying to come up with some heavy rev it, but folks can't get a hold to it. He said, write the vision and make it plain. Make it explicit. Make it express so the people that read it, he that run, he may run that readeth it. Make the purpose for writing the vision, making it plain, was so that the individual that readeth it could begin to run with it. He's not running from it. He don't want you to run to it. He wants you to run with the vision. Come on, get make it so plain when they hear it, they won't go out and go, mm, child, you know, I ain't falling for that. But they'll catch it and run with it and take it somewhere else. Huh? When you toss that football, when the brother catch the football, he don't stand there and say, look what I got. No, he getting up. Come on here. I mean, no. And every opponent is after the man with the ball. Come on here. The, the devil is after the man with the vision. Come on here. But I want you to know everybody understands is rooting for the man that's got the vision. Come on. That's what I'm telling you. This, the, the vision instantly draws attention from both sides. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He said, he said, listen, I want to, for the vision, for the vision, he, he, why did he want you to run with the vision? He wants you to run with the vision because the vision is for an appointed time. You got to run with it. You can't drag your feet. You can't say, I'm going to do it next time. I'm going to get it next year. Next year, I'm going to do better. What capital stewardship is concerned, we don't need you to do better next year, baby. We need you to do better now, right now, right now, today. Come on here. You know, some of you will walk out of here today and won't give nothing toward capital stewardship because you ain't got it all. Give something. Go on. It's going to be two baskets up here. You ought to put something in both of them. 
Huh? Why? Why? Because you catch the vision. Because you see the vision. Because you behold the vision. He said the vision is for an appointed time. Time means an appointed time. See, an, a fix or an appointed hour. So it's an appointed time. The vision is for how many know when a woman conceives a baby, she begins to expect. But how many know that conception, that, that embryo, that fetus, as it grows in the womb, how many know that is a set time? The doctor would tell you when you're going to deliver. Now we know, come on, because they're human, they, they miss it sometime. But, but basically, you already know it's going to be. 40 weeks. Come on. You already know it's going to be 40 weeks to deliver. You know it's going to be nine months to deliver. So that's a, that's a set time. You know I conceived in January. We ain't finna do nothing in February. Come on here. We, we're not going to do anything in May. Come on here. But I'm trying to tell you, the vision is for an appointed time, so run with it. In other words, get it going. In other words, when you don't see none of it, and it kind of reminds me of a Japanese rubber tree. You plant a Japanese rubber tree and you don't see nothing for seven years. You got to keep watering this spot because you know what it does. The roots grow first. It grows down before it comes up. It's growing all the time, but there's no evidence of it. That's how you in church sometimes. It's happening, but there's no physical, natural evidence. But in the spiritual realm, the root, the foundation is being planted. So you keep watering that thing with the word. You keep watering that thing with finance. You keep the confession going. Why? Because I know what I'm planting, and it will sprout. Huh? So he said, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end, at the end what? At the end of the appointed time. How many know that woman don't have that baby in six months and seven months? But at the end of that time, at the end of that nine months, how many know baby coming? Now at the end of the time, look what the Bible says. It, it says, And I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. That's why we're calling it Prosperity and Health Conference. Opening on the 12th will be none other than my friend and brother, Pastor Philip Steele. Pastor Philip Steele will bring the message Monday morning and Monday night on the 12th. And then on Tuesday, April the 13th, we're going to have Dr. Jennifer Johnson from the Full Council Ministry, the Call to Excellence Ministries right here out of North Little Rock. She'll be bringing our 10.30 a.m. Uh, message. And then that night, Bishop Silas Johnson, that's right, we're going to have Dr. Jennifer on Tuesday morning, and then Bishop Silas Johnson on Tuesday night, April the 13th. And then on April the 14th, we're going to have Reverend Jeannie Caldwell on that morning, that Wednesday morning, Reverend Jeannie Caldwell from In His Presence right here in Little Rock will be bringing the message. And on, on Wednesday night, Apostle Happy Caldwell will be bringing the message on that Wednesday night. And then, oh my God, I got a treat for you that Thursday. On Thursday, none other than my wife, Lady Jesse Ford, will be bringing the message Thursday morning and Thursday night on April the 15th. And then yours truly, I will be your anchor man on April the 16th for the morning and the evening service. I want you to make plans to join us. Remember, Monday morning and Monday night, April the 12th, Pastor Philip Steele. Tuesday morning, Dr. Jennifer Johnson. Tuesday night, Bishop Silas Johnson. Wednesday morning, Reverend Jeannie Caldwell. Then on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Apostle Happy Caldwell. Lady Jesse Ford, Thursday morning and night. And then I will be the speaker on that Friday morning and Friday night. Looking to see you here. Remember, mark your calendar, April the 12th through the 16th, 10.30 a.m., 7 p.m. Right here, 9101 Lou Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas. Health and prosperity. Don't miss it. Courage God. through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, Send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free.